autofocus. So, uh, we have a legless cabinet because someone from a refugee resettlement assistance group uh, made contact with me and I am taking in a couple of repairs of donated machines for their group. This is a Kenmore uh, model 1301 and she said that, well, the legs are off because they could get the legs off and it's easier to store these units stacked up with the legs in a pile. But she thought that this machine was stuck, which it does in fact not move. Loosening the hand wheel does does result in the machine uh, loosening up, so that's good. Uh, I'm watching the feed dogs there, so it looks like when I flip the lever from forward to reverse, the feed dogs move. Uh, this I this knob feels like a lock knob. And I, if I tighten this lock knob, yep, this piece stops moving. So this is, must be the stitch width. And then there's a knob for the blind stitch and a regular stitch. Um, and all those turn. So I'm going to pop the top off of this and start soaking it with oil to get it to hopefully start moving. Um, and it feels like this belt is going to need replacing, but first things first, we need to get it to move under its own power. So, just pop the top here. Oh, and this is very tightly screwed down, so don't know if the top has been off this in a while, or if somebody was just uh, very enthusiastic the last time they had it off. But uh, those screws have nylon retaining washers on them, so they won't go missing. And, aha, that little bit of wiggling let the spring retract. So all of this, and I was right, this knob is our width, and then this is the lock to hold that width adjustment. So, oh yeah, it is just bone dry in here, so. Get our oil, and here is the zigzag slider. We'll just move that on our own here. door pops open, so we'll get 
get oil all through here and make sure that we hit all of the crank locations there is there is an oil spot down under this bobbin winding tire on the back side of this uh, hand wheel location so I have a feeling that oiling spot is something that definitely used to hide from a lot of people who did not have their manuals out when they were checking for oiling locations. So, and then we'll Definitely got oil all over it. Gonna tip this up and pop the bobbin case out. Ooh, that bobbin is very rusted, and so is this bobbin case. Put all, all that oil on the top of the machine, and now because that oil is in there, I am not going to tip the machine back to work on or to look at the bobbin area. I am just going to grab my screwdriver and pop the feed dog or the feed plate off, the needle plate there, um, and then probably leave this machine sitting overnight with uh, plenty of oil in all of the bearings. All right, uh, still gotta keep the machine upright, but I popped the needle plate off, and we're just gonna scrape. Oh yeah, there is a big lump of dirt here. And this machine was stored someplace damp because the bobbin case is all rusted over. The uh, bobbin is rusted, and as I remove this uh, packed in felted material from below the feed dogs, it is rusted on the feed dogs where that felt held that felt and filth uh, held moisture against the feed dogs. So um, looks like the uh, hook race is held in with a pair of thumb screws. So, uh, 
tilt this gently back and reach under here Hmm. All right, I'm turning these thumb screws and not feeling that loosen. So I'm gonna Oh, they're not thumb screws, they're just tabs. You can pop them out. There we go. They were just tabs holding the sides in, okay. And our hook. Our hook's not bad. Uh, not visibly damaged, so. That's not a really filthy race, so. We'll take a look at that in a little bit and all right uh, I think there's a little more movement in this but we will continue to or we'll uh, leave it open uh, and leave it full of oil and see if tomorrow it's looser from soaking with all that oil